everyone, it's Eileen from No There's a Crafty Idea and I've decided to um, crack on with the journal, the new journal I'm making and I'm going to use the digital kit that I um, created that's on the, the um, my Epsi store I'm actually putting a, um, a flip through of it so it should be on before this video actually so you'll be able to see what it's like so what I've done is I've, um, I've printed out the papers I've done some backgrounds on some of them because um, the, the backgrounds come with the kit but I didn't want to do them on all of them because I wanted to do some stenciling I like doing stenciling so what I've decided to do was um, stencil the back of some of them I'll show you that in a minute the cover I've decided to use is I got this beautiful um, antique quilt given um, which is so precious and um, so I've decided to make um, the cover out of this. So I've got together my fabrics that I'm going to use and I thought we'll, we'll start with the um, cover. So I'll show you the kit in a minute. What I've decided to do is um, keep the, the bottom, as you can see it's got a nice detail along the bottom and I thought that'll be quite nice on the quilt because it'll hang over and it'll just create a nice little bottom. But the quilt itself, how beautiful is that? So I've cut it to size and what I've done is I've sandwiched um, I've sandwiched two of these envelopes together because I want to give it a little bit more um, substance because the, um, the envelopes weren't thick enough and I wanted it to have a little bit more sturdiness. This is an, a very old antique quilt and the fabric isn't the strongest which is why I wanted to give it a little bit more substance. Um, so yeah, so I've got that and then for the inside when I was um, trimming the quilt, I, ha I ended up with these nice little strips. So I thought, wouldn't that make a lovely pocket? And hey ho, once everything's lined up properly, it actually complements the pattern. So you've got the, the full pattern there. So that's going to be great. And then I chose this lovely um, cherry blossom fabric because the cherry blossoms are just starting to... to um, flower where I am. I have a feeling that we're going to be plunged back into winter but we've had some nice spring weather. But I got this fabric, um, a local quilt store of mine had a um, a sale on and it was £2 a metre so I got this and I got a bunch of others. £2 a metre for proper quilting fabric that's just, I mean you normally pay about 3 to £4 for a fat quarter so I went mad and spent a load of money and bought loads of fabrics because, you know, I haven't got enough. <laughs> Nobody ever has. So yeah, so I thought I'd use that and it goes nicely with the colours of the quilt. The only thing I need to decide is I want to put some lace along the top of this because like I said, the fabric is very um, antique and I want to give it a little bit more sturdiness. So I've got a couple of, um, a couple of laces and I just wanted to check them out and see what they look like. So there's this one, see that it's pretty but it covers up that nice red fabric and I like that. Mm, it might be just a little bit too thick. So we'll put that one aside. Now there's this one which is a bit more lacy and you can see more through it. So let's have a look and see. Again I think it just it covers up too much of the lovely fabric. It does look nice but nope not that one let's try this one i got this one out so i was looking at the colors of the um the fabric and thinking this much is quite nice now that's quite nice and it is a heavy crocheted lace so it's got some stability to it and it doesn't cover up all that red i think i'm going to go with this one definitely so let's get that one ready now <coughs> excuse my throat I'm going to sew this off camera because you don't need to watch me sewing but all I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this onto the actual um, fabric and then I'm going to place everything lined up, get everything lined up and I'm just going to sew around the edges. I'm going to do that off camera because my sewing machine is quite an old one and boy did she make a lot of noise. So I'll get old Betty out. <laughs> later and when I've finished I will show you the um, the work I've done on it. The only other thing I wanted to do before I sew it together is I thought it would look nice if I had like a, a doily or something on it 
So I've got a few out just to see what they look like. And that's too big and too white. And that one's definitely too small. Although I could do it like on the corner and have it like that might look nice. Well, it's a possibility. Again, too small. Mm, not right. Let's have a look at this one. This one's a bit bigger, so. Oh, yeah, I like that one. I wonder if I could put that. It's going to be too much, isn't it? I don't want to take away from this beautiful quilt fabric. I just thought it would look nice with a, and it gives it a nice handy um, place to hold your journal because like I said, this is very antique fabric. And so this will take a lot more wear and tear than the fabric will. It is, is a, it is an antique one. You can see it's got like a lot of discoloration and that, but um, yeah. So what I might do is before I sew the journal together, I'll sew this on first. And then I'm, I'm only going through one layer. So I'll show you all that when I'm finished sewing it. Like I say, I'm not getting Betty out. She's just too noisy. So back to the papers. So I've, um, I've got these papers ready. And what I've done is uh, my um, cutter has a lovely um, cutting blade that gives you different patterns. And when I was looking at them, I thought that that will look lovely cut out like that. And it just gives an extra bit of decoration to the page. I didn't print um, um, to fit the page. No, I didn't. You know, I, I had like a, a bit of a border around um, the printer I've got at the moment. You can't do that. So it's um, it's no good. So what I thought I would do. I'm going to show you the backs. So that's one of the printable backs that's the other printable back what I've just done is I've layered different things um, to give it just a, a nice antique vintage feel now this is one of the stencils I've already done I've chosen to do the pink and it is um, Tim Holtz festive berries and I've added in a little bit on some of them of um, Tim Holtz um, peeled paint. These two actually go together well um, and I've used them on other journals before. Um, so some of the pages are just pink. I was going to do um, avocado dyeing for this one. I just I wanted to to leave it as a, like a coffee stain type um, journal. So I'll show you the other papers I've got. So you can see I've used a little bit of the green to give it to give a little bit more extra accent to it um, and when these are folded over obviously you'll only see one side or the other and then I've done I love this pattern I just got these stencils off um, eBay I think it was and I can't remember the name of them but um, they're actually quite nice stencils I'll show you the ones I've got um, and they're just I think you, you can buy a folder for them and that but I just bought a pack and I've got another pack that I got off Etsy and so just you know I can't give you the names of them I'm sorry about that but you can see um, and then this one's a bit more I wanted a bit more going on with this one it, because this is distressing ink you can write over it even where it's a little bit darker when you write over it I've done it in my own journal it, it still shows up so and there's that one and it doesn't take away all the white space but you know a little bit of white space isn't going to hurt anyone and I've left one to do so let's do another rose and I might just do this one coming down the side of the page so let's get our inks and I, you can laugh at my little brush, it snapped. And you know what, I can't find these anywhere. I've been on Amazon and, and I've been in every shop and I can't find these makeup brushes anywhere. If anybody knows where to get them, please drop a comment and tell me or a link because I'm, I'm desperately trying to find some more because all my others have disappeared. I've got a sneaking suspicion they're in my me, me daughter's makeup bag. <laughs> so... See, I'm not doing, I'm not trying to make it all equal. I want some faded places and I want some um, more integrated places. And I'm, cardinal rule, I'm breaking 
don't use the same brush for for two different inks but I'm breaking that rule and just add a little bit of green into it doesn't have to be a lot just a little there we are and then that gives a lovely pattern and because this is um, the kit that I'm using is called um, Rose Elegance I wanted to keep it kind of rose um, like a kind of rose theme so that's why I'm using the rose stencils so let's start off with a little bit of the green this time do these leaves and it doesn't matter if your colours kind of mix I kind of like that when I'm stenciling it just gives a nice effect and then let's put the lid on that one and we're going to go back to the rose or festive berries as it's called I'm going to just dab this off on a little bit of scrap paper because I don't want it too intense that didn't work very well okay put a little bit there blend in with that green a little bit and there we go right let's see what we've got oh there we go you see you can see how it blends the two colors together i uh, just i love that effect um it just adds an extra dimension to the stenciling let's just wipe off that brush okay that's the stenciling done so that's all my pages prepared now so i've got i think there's 10 pages um and i'm only doing one um one signature so i want there to be about 17 to 18 pages so i've picked out a variety of coffee dyed paper so this coffee dyed paper um it was made with a tea coffee solution oh what's that um, and all i did was I, I got another stencil it was a tim holtz music stencil and i've very lightly gone over it with the uh, um vintage photo and i did this when i was coffee dyeing them so these have been i've got a whole pile of these ready to use um so i've just picked up two of those and i haven't done the backs on them you can see the backs are nice and grungy i do like my coffee dyeing a little bit darker it's just it's personal preference isn't it i suppose so i got those two and then i was trying some different techniques and isn't that lovely so I've got that one and you can see on the back it's just I love those patterns um, and you can see these little dots here are where my my actual tea dyeing tins tea and coffee is quite acidic um, and so it will destroy your tins so I would if you're going to do it choose some tins that are, um, you're going to keep just for that and um, what you'll find is that you'll get all these wonderful little grungy bits where it starts to rust um, and I quite like that you can see just you've got these little tiny they almost look like um, nebulas with the little black stars in them and then um, I got some of my polka dot ones because I love using this tin it's actually an old pizza tin which is why it's all round um, and you can actually see the seal in the middle of it so oh sorry excuse my phone so yeah so that's um, the coffee dyed papers I've got and so I've got six of them so that takes us up to 16 and then the other two papers I wanted to use was I got this book and this is very antique paper um, it was from a German um, I think it was like a, a gardening magazine collection book um, and it was from I'm sure it's from 1854 and I love the paper and but it is still quite sturdy so I don't mind using it as an actual page so I'm going to use that as a page so that's 17 and then of course I love to use music paper I just think it it's so pretty and it's um it's actually in German and it's called Blumenstück but at Bloom I just love the idea of it with the roses now these are a little bit bigger than my pages so I'm going to probably have to trim them down a little bit um but I, I don't want to trim them down too much because uh, again the, the both of them are antique I think that one might actually be only slightly so I'm just going to take off that edge and that's the edge where it was attached to the book so it's not going to lose too much and then this one I'll just take off a little bit again from this edge where it was attached to the book 
so let's do that now. I'm not going to take off these edges because I'm going to fold it in. Um, so yeah, so we're going to take off, let me just get a piece of this coffee dyed so I can see with the size we're playing with. So I think if we go, if we just go a bit there. Now this is not an official tear ruler, but it works just as well, usually. <laughs> usually. <laughs> right. There we go. And then get rid of the scraps. And let's do this side. So I hope everybody's having a great crafting time. It's lovely to see signs of spring, even though I think it's a full sense of security we're getting lured into. But yeah, the, the May Blossom is absolutely my favourite ever flower in the world. And I just, it's lovely to see it starting to come out. Because it's so fleeting, you only get it for maybe a week or two a year. That's great, that's perfect. Um, but yeah, it's it's just nice to see it because it just it's a promise of um, spring to come. And who doesn't like that? Especially with everything going on with this horrible virus. Um, we just found out this week that it's hit our city. Um, we've had a couple of cases. Um, bless uh, a friend of mine, it was someone she knows that caught it and it's a sad uh, it's a sad state of affairs. It seems to be targeting like older people who have like existing health problems. Now I'm not going to fold this on both sides because <clears throat> there's only a tiny little bit left over. So what I'm going to do, you can see at the top we've got this and I like that title so I'm going to use that and, and that will be turned into a pocket there we go and then if I fold that there we are so that's going to open up like that and then that will be a nice pocket and then the same with this one I'm not going to fold both sides I'm going to use this in some of the um, the collage making as well the, um, I don't want to lose too much of this so what I think I'll do is I'll fold it from the top but this one I think I'll just leave this as a flip out because that's good journaling space there you can't get rid of good journaling space not on 160 70 year old paper no right so we've got them folded let's fold the rest of our papers so yeah it's a scary prospect i hope everybody out there as well and you're all keeping well but um unfortunately uh i work in the care industry and we can't just you can't just stop it's, it still has to people have to be taken care of um so it's a scary prospect i'm really hoping that none of my girls guys and girls get ill because there's a few who have um, underlying health problems but you know what let's not talk about the coronavirus I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it so let's get back to spring yeah so my hawthorn trees um, are showing buds which is great my hazelnuts have got the catkins and they're looking great I'm hoping I'm going to get a crop off them this year. I haven't managed to get a crop so far. I love hazelnuts. They're um, the kind of my favourite of all nuts. Um, and I bought two hazelnut trees about four years ago. Um, it's they're taking a long time to establish. But the problem is I live close to the, um, the sea. I mean, I'm not far from the cliffs. And so uh, my apple trees failed. <laughs> they... They just were like, nope, we're not going to give you apples. Um, <laughs> so that didn't work. And I'm thinking, you know, it's been four years now, hazelnuts. Please give me some hazelnuts. But we'll see. We'll see. It's lovely living near the beach. I, I love it. Um, 
and I was just out the other day. I live close to a, a famous beach, <clears throat> and I live close to a, a beach that's famous for sea glass. Um, so, I me and the hubby decided, you know, it's a lovely day, springs in the air. Let's um, let's go and get ourselves along the beach and do some sea glass hunting. Um, and you know, it was such a lovely day, just um, wandering along. The, um, it was quite blustery and it wasn't the warmest. I mean, I'm on the northeast coast of England, it's never the warmest here. But um, yeah, it was nice and I managed to get some nice pieces of sea glass. I've been looking for crafts to do because I, I do love it. Um, and I found this nice candle holder to make, so I think I might do that. <laughs> It's, uh, it's very beautiful sea glass. I didn't realise, but it's you know it's famous across the world. The place is called Seam Beach, um, and apparently Seam Sea Glass is really really sought after. Um, people sell it on on eBay, and that I've got bags of it in my garden. You know, <laughs> I've been walking that beach for years, but yeah, apparently people. I don't know if you can hear that, but the birds are having a bit of a chase about on the roof. Um, another sign that uh, spring is here. <laughs> but yeah, I've got bags of it in the garden, but apparently people do sell it and people from across the world buy it, so maybe I'm missing a trick there. Miss that little tiny bit, let's just snip that. Right, let's put our pages together. Let's see where we are. So what's going to be the front page? I want something, something stand out. I do like that one. I kind of like that one. I'm thinking this one because I like the flower I like the way it is. Hmm. But then again, I like oh, this is the problem. No, I think I'll go with this one. It's nice and bright and uh, and it's got the border down. Yeah, that can be the first one. So let's get these in. Let's see. And put that on. Ooh, I'm off camera. Now these pages, because I've cut them down, they are going to be a bit smaller than the um, coffee dye, but that's fine. That doesn't bother me. I think I'll put the German one in quite early. I'm going to add to this because um, I actually want to put an envelope in as well, but I haven't sorted that out yet. So there will be an envelope going in, and maybe there's a couple of other little bits. Let's see. One of our music ones. I just love putting together these signatures. It's just such a fun thing to do. I might put that one in there. And then, oh yeah, I'll put that one in. With that lovely grungy pattern on it. See how fun that looks next to this. Nice grunge and nice, I just love that juxtaposition. There we go music paper in. Actually what I should have done is folded one of these. I'll use that one. So I'm going to fold that one the other way because that can be the centre. I've been hearing sirens all day. I think some, it's one of them that must be a kid's toy because um, it doesn't sound like our normal sirens. So there's a kid running around the neighbourhood with a siren. <laughs> Don't you just love them? <laughs> right, and this one I'm going to fold the other way because I want this to be my centrepiece. So let's just give that a nice fold. And then it'll open up like that now. Let's have a quick look through this and see how it looks. Yeah, I like that one because it's got the back paper on. That music paper looks nice next to the rose. Paper. Just gives it that nice antique vintage feel, doesn't it? And then I think I'll put the envelope there in between these two papers just to separate them. And then there we go. And then there's that. Yep. 
yeah I love the way the the grunge of the paper is just next to the delicate rose stenciling just gives it a nice feel doesn't it and the paper complements the colours as well and then there's the centre yes I love that that's perfect right so that's our signature put together I need to organise getting a um, an envelope for it and sorting that out I'm gonna have to position the pages a bit so I want, I want to get that in and um, what was the other thing I wanted to pop in now let me see was this one I thought it was yes I actually might use this envelope now this is one of the ones that I've um, used my um, oh what do you call it embossing folder on and it's it's given the the envelope that lovely beautiful emboss feel but I think it just needs just go over it a bit It'll help if I get some ink on it and then it's just going to give it that get the embossing to stand out just a little bit there we go oh, it's going to be different on this side because the embossing is the other way but that's good that's fine there we go and I'm going to decorate this one up as well so yeah that's um it's very subtle but it's kind of bringing the embossing out a little bit just a bit and I'm trying not to press too hard so I'm not going down into the, the actual paper itself and then on this side because it's indented it's actually giving it a nice shadow effect there we go yeah I like that see how it's giving it that nice shadow effect right so that can go in we'll pop that in in between those two that we had next to each other there uh, no let's see where were we i've lost them oh there they are and that will go going like that and what i'll do is i'll um i'm not going to seal this because this can become a tuck but what I'll do is I'll chop the end of the um, the envelope so that things can flip in that way and then this will be a nice little tuck to tuck your um, bits of ephemera in. I mean I could put it the other way so that the tuck's that way. That's better isn't it? Yeah. There we go. Need a tiny bit more ink on that side. You can see where um, the embossing page uh, um, folder has pressed really hard and some of the, the um, white of the paper has shown through that's fine there we go it's still quite a sturdy envelope and that looks lovely there I like that I really like that so that's the envelope found what else do we have in our pile of tricks this is just some papers that I've had I like that one that could be a half page couldn't it There's another half page these are something I've been working on um, little medallion things they're quite nice um, and I've been working on them as little tucks or little decorations oh that's a quite nice one actually and that would match the I might keep that out okay what else do we have let's see oh an Edith Holden page yes please and then these are bits of embossed paper that I've had some more bits and pieces right okay so Edith Holden let's, what's this one it's not roses but it's pretty enough isn't it yeah I think I'll pop that in and pop that to the side let's have a look at this one it's nice and grungy but nope I like this one because it was um, lined paper I don't know if you can say that but yeah there you go it's lined paper so we'll, you, we'll use that one as well this is going to be a chunky monkey I can see that coming let's see nope yep like that there and then old Edith I want her to be against one of the, the grungier pages 
Yeah, like that. Oh yeah, this is going to be a nice chunky monkey by the time we've done all the decorating and that. And in that, that lovely um, cover, it's going to be great. Right, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the cover um, and I'll show you when it's finished. The next video will be um, me putting the signature in and then we can get on with decorating. And as you can see, I've got my little basket. I've cut out all my little bits of ephemera um, and so we can get on with decorating and, uh, and all the good stuff. Yeah. Right. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this one. Um, if you do, um, drop a like and please subscribe. I'm nearly at 50 subscribers and I'm hoping that I can do like a 50 subscriber giveaway so you would be helping out with that and hopefully you'll be in the giveaway. I haven't um, finished the, the item I'm going to give away but it's, it's going to be a nice piece of ephemera. So please do subscribe, drop a like and please drop a comment if you're enjoying it and if you're any success, and if you know where to get these brushes, please do let me know. <laughs> so happy crafting bye